Good morning, everyone. Let's worship.
Good morning, Church. I want to briefly introduce ourselves. My name is Jay Maramara, and this is my wife, Che, and our two sons, CJ and Michael. We want to welcome you to our online Christmas worship service. Finally, after several long and arduous months, the season we have all been looking forward to is here. Although through the challenges and heartaches caused by this year-long pandemic, we can still bring ourselves to rejoice over the great things God has done this year. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The book of Isaiah was written about 750 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah and the whole nation of Israel were in captivity with the powerful Babylonian Empire. The Israelites were in great distress as they were ruled by another kingdom. But in it, God, through Isaiah, spoke of a deliverance through the birth of a child. He prophesied about the coming of a wonderful counselor, the mighty God and the Prince of Peace, the eventual birth and coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This cause for celebration remains as joyous as ever as we look back and reflect on the power of God to deliver us from the calamities of the typhoons, from the loss of jobs and businesses, and even of our loved ones. Because through it all, God, through the birth of His Son, proved Himself faithful forever. In today's lineup, we will have powerful men of God to preach to us this morning. Tito Coco Enrile will give us the communion message, while Tito Viano Faburada will touch our hearts with the offering message. For the main message, Tito Bobby Monte Alegre will preach the word, with a response from Tito Bong Aquino. We will end with some awesome announcements from Tito Ariel Lestrada. And with that, let's all bow down our heads and pray. Father God in heaven, we are so grateful for the life you have blessed us with. No matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we can always come back to you to find comfort and praise your name. Use all the speakers powerfully as our hearts praise you this morning. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Christmas worship service of ICOC Philippines. Merry Christmas! What an honor for me to lead us all in communion today. What we're going to do is we're going to read from the book of Ephesians, which is a letter from Paul the Apostle, which he wrote while he was in jail. You know, kahit na ganon yung circumstance ni Paul, this letter contains some of the most encouraging and optimistic words written to a young church. So let's begin by reading in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, all the way to verse 8. So again, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. To eight. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. So Dito Paul was reminding the disciples in Ephesus to praise God for every spiritual blessing they have in Christ. What are these spiritual blessings ano nga ba mga to that Paul was talking about? Well, one thing that I can think of based on uh, verse 4, which we have just read, he says this, 
For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Alam mo, napaisip ako doon eh. Ano yun? He chose us before the creation of the world? Anong ibig sabihin nun? Anong ibig sabihin nun, di ba? Does this mean to say that God knew me before I was even born? Does this scripture that comes to mind in Psalms 139 verse 16, which says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Mga kapatid, I realized that before God made you or me, lahat ng ginawa natin, nakita na niya. Nakasulat na silang lahat. So that would mean to say that he also saw the horrible sins that I would commit and that my life was going to cause harm not only to myself, but also to others. Diba, I'm sure that we have all experienced what-ifs or kung alam ko lang. You probably had a situation where you said, Nako, kung alam ko lang. Hindi ko na sana kinuha itong tao na to para magtrabaho para sa akin. Kung alam ko lang, yung pala, lulokohin lang ako. Or, kung alam ko lang, sana I would have never ever entered into a relationship with this individual. Sana lang, nakinig ako sa nanay ko. O sana lang, nakinig ako sa tatay ko. O kung sana lang, nakinig lang ako sana sa mga kaibigan ko. We've got, we've had some of these things happen to us, di ba? If you, kn- if you knew what you know now, nako, we wouldn't have touched them with a 10-foot pole. But what about God, my dear friends? He knew us before He made us. He knew that we would hurt ourselves, that we would hurt others, and that we would also hurt Him. Pero ginawa, ginawa niya pa rin tayo. Alam ni God that I will be filled with vices, that I would be immoral, that I would be filled with pride, that I will have a lot of anger, and that I would hurt other people. Pero ginawa niya pa rin ako. And not only that, 30 years ago, He chose me to be holy and blameless in His sight. In the way that he chose you to. This is really hard to understand because only God can love this way. Alam di God that we cannot save ourselves, mga kapatid. He not only knew us before we were born and yet still made you and me, he also chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. And then, you know what else? He also saved us through the blood of his, of his Son, Jesus. Then, He forgave us our sins and lavished us with grace. I can only say that's love. What incredible spiritual blessings we do have in Christ. So when we take the bread and the wine, let's remember all these spiritual blessings we have in Jesus who knew us before he made us, who chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight, who saved us and forgave us our sins, and who loves us and lavishes grace on us every single day. So mga kapatid, let's have an incredible time remembering these blessings from the Lord. Let's pray. Oh dear God, uh, Father, we are so grateful talaga for all of the spiritual blessings that you have lavished on us, Father, to your Son, Jesus Christ. Whatever thank God, talagang you knew everything already na gagawin namin, Panginoon. Lahat ng masamang gagawin namin at ginawa namin, Panginoon. And yet still, you made us. 
And you did not only make us, Father. You, you chose us to be blameless, to be holy and blameless in your sight. Of everyone else, kami po, Panginoon, ang pinili ninyo. You gave us the chance. And then you forgave us our sins, dear Lord. And Father, talagang, we are just so blessed having a relationship with you. I pray, God, that as we break the bread, we will be reminded how the flesh of your Son was torn apart and how his blood freely flowed, dear Father, so that our sins would be forgiven. God, salamat talaga sa sobra ninyong pagmamahal sa bawat isa sa amen, Father. Lord, I pray that we will take this, what we have right now, and be reminded every single day as we celebrate this communion and as we celebrate this Christmas season. Lord, we love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. For our benevolence this morning, let us read a passage from the Bible that would inspire us towards the heart of giving. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, let's read. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God fearing. He gave generously to those in need, and pray to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. In this scripture, the angel told Cornelius 
that his prayers and gifts to the poor had come up to God as a memorial offering. Is God making a statement here? I believe he is. What is a memorial? A memorial is something established like a special day or a monument which causes us to remember a particular person or event. So here, we can see that the prayers of Cornelius and his generosity to those in need reached heaven and caught God's attention. They were something that God cannot ignore, forget, nor overlook. And we all know that God chose Cornelius for a very important event in Christianity. He was the first Gentile to be chosen by Jesus to become a Christian. The first Gentile to be saved and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cornelius distinguished himself from other Gentiles through his prayers and generosity. This scripture taught me that giving is as important as prayers. If prayers must be the center of our Christian life, giving to those in need must also be at the heart of every person professing to be a Christian. The story of Cornelius reveals the heart of God towards the needy, the widows, the fatherless, the sick, the hungry, and the homeless. And the Bible is replete with scriptures showing that God's heart beats for their sufferings. 2020 is a year like no other. We have been through volcanic eruptions, pandemic, earthquakes, storms, and sickness. And we all know that we have brothers and sisters we have faced difficult and painful times. But I can testify that through our benevolence, through your generosity, our church has become a vessel through whom God can express His love and compassion. I have seen brothers and sisters helping and comforting those who are sick, those who experience loss of job or home, and those who experience death of loved ones. In Cebu, we have a sister who suffered a severe stroke and was hospitalized for a month. But the disciples allowed themselves to be used by God to help save her life. And I believe, as a church, we all have stories of generosity to tell. Yes, 2020 is a year marked with crisis, but it reveals who we are. It helped us see our true selves, that we are Christians, that we love not just with words, but with actions. And your giving through our benevolence is a living testimony that even in the midst of a crisis, we can still be a blessing to someone. Thank you for your heart to give. May our love and compassion for others continue to grow. And just like Cornelius, may we distinguish ourselves from the rest of the world by our love and concerns for one another. I love you, church. May God bless us all. Have a Merry Christmas and a blessed 2021. Let us pray for our benevolence. Father God in heaven, we praise you for the privilege to be a blessing to others. Bless the heart of everyone as we continue to carry the burdens of our brothers and sisters who are facing difficulties and trials in their lives. May our giving today be a memorial offering to you. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that your baby boy would someday walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Sa bawat pamilya, kapatid, kaibigan, nakasama namin ngayong umaga na to. Thank you for joining us as we worship God and for having us in your homes. The year is about to end in a few weeks. The question is, paano mo ba gustong maalala ang taong 2020? We cannot deny the fact that we all went through and still going through a crisis. Sa pagputok ng Taal Volcano, Mga bagyo, at hanggang ngayon, ang COVID-19. We no longer have freedom like we used to. Hindi na tayo tulad ng dati na malayang lumabas. Ngayon, pag lumabas tayo ng ating tahanan, may pangamba at may pag-iingat na kailangan para hindi tayo magkasakit. Mahirap lumabas na nakamask at face shield. But I am certain that we will adjust soon. Some of us got sick. Some of us lost jobs. For some, they lost their homes. Some of us lost someone we love. Patuloy po kaming lubos na nakikiramay. Wala man po kami sa inyong tabi, kasama po kayo sa aming panalangin ng ating simbahan. I respect the stories and the different experiences of disciples. It's been a tough year and for some, tougher. That there's no other way that we can minimize the pain that goes with it. I am grateful and inspired to see you remain in faith. 
This morning, I would like to share a lesson about something that helped me and my family survive this crisis spiritually. I believe that this is something that can help us gain the right perspective as we enter the Christmas week and as we see the year ends. It is called counting your blessings. This mindset helps us cope every day as we navigate this new normal. In John chapter 1, verse 16, it says, From His abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. As Christians, no matter what we're going through today, we can still find hope and gracious blessing in our lives. The crisis we experience and still experiencing is global. Everyone here and abroad is going through the pandemic with us. But you know what's amazing and comforting, kapatid kaibigan? That we are going through this knowing God is with us. Ang Diyos ang naggagabay at nagbibigay ng kapanatagan sa atin. That He is with us no matter what. Wala tayong di kakayanin pagkasama natin si God. He will never fail us. Imagine going through this without the knowledge or presence of God. Imagine going through these dark times without the assurance that God is with you. I call this assurance a great blessing. Going through life, through ups and downs, thick or thin, is the greatest blessing anyone can ever receive. We are indeed beyond blessed. That as Christians, we have God in our lives. If you are a Christian today, a disciple of Jesus, I want you to know you are blessed. Look at the person beside you and say, you are blessed. The title of our lesson this morning is The Promise of Blessings. Our main passage this morning will come from Jeremiah 29, verse 10 to 14. The Bible says, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'll be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Many lessons have been preached and heard using this passage. I'm sure, like me, this one passage in the Bible we consider favorite because it is uplifting, encouraging, and very hopeful. For some, this scripture is a security blanket. The lesson this morning aims to uplift your spirit, to encourage your soul, and to give you hope to look forward to better days ahead. Point number one, the blessing of relief. Jeremiah spoke these words to the Jews who have been living under exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. These words were spoken to people in the midst of hardship and suffering, people longing for immediate relief. However, God's response is not to provide an instant remedy for the difficult situation facing his people. Rather, God's promises that he has a plan to prosper or bless them in the midst of their current situation. Christians facing difficult situations today can take comfort in this. Even it is not a promise to instantly relieve us from hardship or suffering, but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives. Regardless of our current situation, He can work through it to prosper us and give us hope in the future. 
What is your current situation today, kapatid kaibigan? Are you happy and content? Amen. But for some of us, are you discouraged? Napanghihinaan ka ba ng loob? Are you feeling lonely? Nangungulila ka ba sa pag-iisa? Are you hopeless? Nawawalan ka ba ng pag-asa? Napapagod ka na ba? Alam ko, pag nahihirapan at nasasaktan tayo, ninanais natin matapos na ang paghihirap natin agad. May problema ka ba sa health? O sa health ng pamilya mo? Are you going through a family problem? Marriage problem? Problem with kids? Namumoblema ka ba sa finances mo? How to make ends meet? Mga kapatid, kaibigan, God promised us the blessing of relief. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, the Bible says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The Bible says that we should not lose heart because our trials, no matter how difficult, are light and momentary. Panandalian lamang. No matter how hard your situation is right now, kapatid, kaibigan, be assured that it will end. That is a promise. There is nothing too hard for the Lord, and He will give you relief and a way out so you can endure any trial. Sinasabi nga sa 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Minsan ang masakit, at matinding pinagdadaanan natin ay walang lunas. Minsan, wala sa mga kamay natin ang solusyon o kontrol na kailangan lang natin pagdaanan at mag kay God. The best lessons in life is birth through hard times. You see brothers, sisters, and friends, pain is God's megaphone. He has a message to tell. When we're in hard times, pain is God's refining tool to transform us to be more like Jesus. Relief may come in many forms. From the Word of God, a kind word or gesture from another Christian, and sometimes even from a stranger. Sometimes God doesn't change your situation, but He will change your heart on how you will respond to the hardship. What are the hardships you're going through today? Are you experiencing pain and suffering? Remember, brother, sister, and friend, God will provide relief and strength so you can make it through. Second point, the blessing of His presence. The blessing of His presence. So Jeremiah 29, verse 12 and 13, Babasahin ko po ito sa Tagalog. Kung maganap na ito, kayo'y tatawag, lalapit at dadalangin sa akin. At diringgin ko naman kayo. Kapag hinanap nyo ako, ako'y inyong matatagpuan. Kung buong puso nyo akong hahanapin. We can take comfort in knowing that God's promises to be there for us in every difficult situation. God proclaims through Jeremiah, that when you call on me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. His promise is not to spare us from trials and sufferings, but as we go through it, He will be there. He may not provide immediate relief, but He promised to be there with us through it all. When you cry, He cries with you. When you doubt, He is patient with you. When you feel weak, crushed, brokenhearted, He is closest to you. In Psalm 34 verse 18, don't forget to pray. When you pray, you invite Him to carry the burden for you. 
Next time you pray, give all your heart and be rest assured that He, he listens. It might not feel that He hears you, but all the more you need to believe that He listens. Third and last, the blessing of a future. One of the greatest causes of anxiety today during this pandemic is the uncertainty of our situation. Kailan ba darating ang vaccine? Will I be infected by the virus or one of my loved ones? Kailan ba makakabawi ang ekonomiya sa trabaho? Kailan ako makakabawi sa finances ko? The uncertainty of things causes much anxiety in many people today, even by Christians. But God is not uncertain. He knows. Back in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God says, For I know. He knows what He's doing in your life, even if you don't understand it now. He is always sovereign and in control of all things at all times. He knows the beginning and the end to all this. With God, we can look forward to a secure future. As I close out, I would like to give all of us a brotherly challenge. As we enter the Christmas week, the challenge is to count our blessings. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 10, the title of this passage is Praise for Spiritual Blessings in Christ. In verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. We have been richly blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In Christ, we are complete. In Christ, we lack no good thing. The best gifts this Christmas cannot be placed under the tree. It's not tangible. It is spiritual. The spiritual blessing of love, faith, hope, peace, and every spiritual you can think of is yours in Christ. And they are priceless. The most important lesson we have learned this year is to value what is most important. Even after the quarantines are lifted, life as we know will never be the same. Do not look back. Look forward. Even if you don't see what lies ahead each day, focus on what is right in front of you. Your personal relationship with God your family, the promise of salvation, every good thing you have in Christ. Although so much has been taken away, a lot has been given back to us. Like the days we wish we could spend with our loved ones. Like the hours we wasted in the traffic. Like the minutes we needed to say a prayer. Like the seconds we lacked to show affection. Lahat ng yan at marami pang iba ay naibalik nitong taon ng crisis. Remain faithful. Be positive. 
Be sensitive. Be brave. Let not this crisis define your year, but rather the precious lessons we have not learned any other way. Now a practical challenge for us this morning, let us take time to count our blessings this Christmas season. Let us share with our family at home or at church the blessings we value most. Share what you are grateful for. Decide to focus on the positive. Then pray to thank God for everything. God is not done with you yet. He is faithful in fulfilling His great promises. Wait for His deliverance. Know that He is present and take hold of the bright future ahead. Stay in faith as for sure better days are yet to come. On behalf of the ICOC Philippine staff and the Philippine Leadership Council, we would, would like, like to greet everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Woo! Maraming salamat, Bobby, sa mensahe na ibinagay mo sa amin ngayon sa umagang ito. The promise of blessings o ang pangako ng mga pagpapala. Tatlong punto ang iyong isinyere sa amin. The blessing of relief, the blessing of His presence, and the blessing of a future. Sa ibinagay mo, ang tumimo ng gusto sa puso ko ay yung pangalawang punto. Ang pagpapala ng presensya ng Diyos or the blessing of His presence. Ito ang bagay na nakatulong sa akin at sa aking pamilya kahit na madaming mga hamon ang kinaharap namin ngayong taong ito. Ang presence ni God sa aming buhay na, siya, na siyang gumabay sa amin para malagpasan namin ang lahat ng mga hamon na ito. Nung buwan ng Prebrero, ako ay nasangkot sa isang aksidente ang aming kasakyan ay nabunggo ng isang bus nung ako ay pauwi after naming mag-deliver ng relief goods sa Batangas sa mga disciples na naapektuhan ng pagputok ng bulkan Taal. Nasira yung kasakyan, buti na lamang ay naayos pa. Ngunit yung insidente yon ay lubang gumawa ng matinding epekto sa aking pag-iisip. Ang aking asawa ay dumaan sa isang operasyon Nung buwan ng Mayo. Ngunit sa likod ng pandemya na ating kinakaharap, sa likod ng mga sitwasyon na yon na aming kinaharap, yung presence ni God sa aming buhay ang siyang naggabay sa amin para malagpasan namin ang mga bagay na yon. Alam ko lahat tayo may iba't ibang mga bagay na kinakaharap sa pandemya ng ito. Ngunit ang presence ni God ang gumabay sa atin. Tumulong sa atin para tayo ay maka-overcome. Kaya nga sa pagpasok ng bagong taon, ano man ang hamon na ating harapin, basta kasama natin si God, mapagtatagumpayan natin ang mga ito. Para sa ating D-group discussion, meron akong dalawang katanungan na maari natin gamitin sa ating pag-uusap. Una, ano ang mga spiritual na blessing na natanggap mo mula sa Diyos? Sa taong ito, paano ito nakatulong sa iyong espiritual na paglago bilang isang kristyano? Pangalawang tanong, by faith, ano ang inaasahan mong gagawin ng ating Diyos sa iyong sarili, sa iyong pamilya, at sa ating iglesia sa taong 2021? In behalf of my wife and my son Derek, gusto namin batiin kayong lahat ng isang maligayang Pasko Pagpalaing kayo at ingatan ng ating Diyos. Kahabagan kayo at subaybayan. Lingapin at bigyan ng kapayapaan sa pag-alaala natin sa kapanganakan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Wow! What a beautiful and amazing Christmas service. So Merry Christmas everyone for our announcements. Pagkatapos sana ng service natin ngayon, huwag niyo munang isara ang inyong mga smartphones, gadgets, 
or smart TVs. Puntahan nyo ang ating mga social media platforms kagaya ng ICOC Philippines Facebook page, ICOC Philippines YouTube channel, at ICOC.ph yung ating website. At alam mo ba na kapag nag-subscribe ka, pag may mga bagong post or videos, mga good news sharing, uh, or baptisms, manonotify ka nito, so mas updated ka, di ba? At kung gusto mong ma-encourage ng mga nagbabagang balita at malaman kung ano ang mga nagaganap sa buong International Churches of Christ, pumunta ka lamang sa Disciples Today website. At kung gusto mo naman ng mga bagong videos and testimonials from our brothers and sisters around the globe, bisitahin mo naman ang Kidogo YouTube channel. <coughs> ang 2020 ay kakaiba sa lahat ng taon. Maraming nangyari but we will finish this year strong. And God with us, in 2021, we will be stronger. Ito po ang theme natin sa papasok na taong 2021, Stronger. So, mga kapatid, in behalf of the ICOC Philippines leadership at mula sa aming pamilya, nais naming batiin ang bawat isa ng Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. Year. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are honored to be in your presence today. Itong taon ng 2020 ay hindi man uh, naging madali para sa aming lahat dahil sa mga pangyayari. Ngunit God, kayo pa rin ang aming sandalan. Kaya nais naming magpasalamat sa inyo, nais naming itaas kayo dahil kayo po lamang ang aming Panginoon at kayo lamang ang gusto naming makasama sa aming buhay. Salamat po sa inyong pagbibigay ng lakas at proteksyon sa amin itong taon na ito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. To the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, nature sing, nature sing, nature sing. Heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Repeat the sound, repeat 
Watch out for Girl Talk, a vlog by Women for Women, premiering this December 23, 8 a.m. at ICOC Philippines YouTube channel, with a topic on women of faith to be shared back to back by Susan Bedin and Mandy Vercel of Phoenix Church of Christ. Brought to you by ICOC Philippines Women's Ministry.